we are quite concerned. Spoiling the atmosphere, isn't it? It's very bad. Eh? Basically, it's a lot of um, the polluting uh, of the atmosphere. Many things that have happened, wars, I think these things are having an effect. Something to do with the Earth's weather, the bad weather, the ozone layer. The burning of fossil fuels like oil and coal. What the greenhouse effect is? Yeah. No, <laughs> not really. The uh, introduction of pollutants into the atmosphere, which traps the CO2 and the sun's rays, building up a heat, melting the ice caps. Supposedly, they don't have any real scientific proof. La pollution. Pollution forms a kind of layer which prevents the carbon dioxide or the sun's rays, which enter from escaping, and this means that in the future. It will get very hot on Earth. The sun is our only external source of heat and energy. The Earth's temperature is maintained by a balance between heating from the sun's rays and cooling caused by energy escaping to space from the Earth's warm surface and atmosphere. This natural balance between incoming and outgoing energy is essential to life on Earth. On a clear day, most of the energy arriving from the sun in the form of short wavelength radiation passes through the atmosphere to warm the Earth's surface. This energy must be got rid of to maintain the energy balance. It escapes in the form of longer wavelength infrared radiation. But if infrared radiation could escape directly to space, then the Earth would be 30 degrees colder than it is today. It would be uninhabitable. Fortunately, much of this radiation is absorbed in the atmosphere by the so-called greenhouse gases, making the world much warmer than it would be without them. These gases act rather like the glass in a greenhouse, which allows sunlight to enter, provides shelter from the wind, and prevents most of the infrared energy from escaping, keeping the temperature warm. So, the greenhouse effect is not a man-made phenomenon. In fact, it is perfectly natural. It has influenced the development of all our ecosystems by stabilizing atmospheric temperatures at levels conducive to plant, animal, and human life. But for this kind of life to survive on Earth, it is essential that the right balance be maintained between incoming and outgoing energy. By increasing greenhouse gas emissions, we are disturbing this age-old balance. Many of us think of greenhouse gases as being only the dirty emissions of car exhausts and industrial smokestacks. But in fact, there are six important gases occurring randomly in the atmosphere in small quantities. These gases are water vapor, carbon dioxide, methane, ozone, nitrous oxide, and more recently, chlorofluorocarbons, or CFCs. Apart from CFCs, all of these gases occur naturally. But human activity is increasing their concentrations. This increase is causing the enhanced greenhouse effect, a man-made and potentially dangerous phenomenon. Carbon dioxide is by far the most significant of the man-made greenhouse gases. Although it occurs naturally, it is also the one we produce in the greatest quantity. Industrialization has meant a greater use of fuels extracted from the ground, such as coal, gas, and oil. These are known as fossil fuels, and when burned, they produce large amounts of CO2. Transport and the generating of electricity alone account for about 45% of fossil fuel CO2 emissions. It is estimated that during the last 200 years, 
the concentration of carbon dioxide in the atmosphere has risen by 26%. Levels have never been this high since humans inhabited the planet. Carbon dioxide now accounts for about 55% of the enhanced greenhouse effect. Ice core samples have provided accurate data on the atmosphere going back thousands of years. This data, together with modern observation, shows a clear rise not only in carbon dioxide levels, but also in those of methane and other greenhouse gases. The rising levels of methane are at least partly due to increased rice production, waste disposal, mining, cattle ranching, and the large-scale extraction and transportation of natural gas. All of them produce significant quantities of methane, and all of them are on the increase. Ozone is familiar to us all by now as the substance which protects us from the sun's harmful ultraviolet rays. The highest concentrations exist in the upper atmosphere and form what is known as the ozone layer. It is damage to this protective layer that has caused so much concern in recent years. But ozone also plays a significant role as a greenhouse gas. Due to a complex chemical reaction in the lower atmosphere, a number of substances, most of them man-made, come together and ozone is formed. The amount of ozone produced depends largely on weather conditions and sunlight, but it is on the increase. Natural vegetation emits large quantities of nitrous oxide, but the increased concentrations of this gas are thought to come mainly from agriculture and the burning of biomass, such as wood and other vegetation. Chlorofluorocarbons are the only greenhouse gases to be exclusively man-made. They are non-toxic and inert, which makes them safe and useful as aerosol propellants, refrigerants and insulators. They're also used in the manufacture of foam rubber and for cleaning electronic components. CFCs are well known to most of us as the gases blamed for depleting the ozone layer. But they're also a powerful greenhouse agent contributing to the enhanced greenhouse effect. They are particularly significant because they absorb infrared radiation not absorbed by the other gases. Water vapor is undoubtedly the most important greenhouse gas, but it is also perhaps the least well understood. It occurs naturally, is invisible, and is not directly affected by human activity. However, it is affected indirectly through an important feedback mechanism. Warming brought about by other greenhouse gases increases evaporation and allows the atmosphere to hold more water vapor. This may, in turn, enhance the warming. Some gases are more stable in the atmosphere than others. So it's not just the amount we pump out that's important. The quantity of any gas in the atmosphere is determined by a balance between its emissions and the size and strength of its available sinks. Sinks are processes which remove substances from the atmosphere by absorbing them. In the case of carbon dioxide, for example, the main natural sinks are absorption by the oceans and photosynthesis occurring both on land and at sea. The sun's rays strike green plants, driving a process in which carbon from the atmosphere is captured and fixed in the plant itself, whilst oxygen is emitted. But often, even this carbon is not removed from the atmosphere for long. Only plant and marine life, which dies and becomes fixed in the earth or seabed to eventually fossilize, removes carbon permanently from the climate system, if it is not subsequently burned as fuel. Although we increase CO2 levels by burning ever greater quantities of fossil fuels, the effect of the increase is further exacerbated by the fact that we are also reducing the size of the world's natural sinks, such as forest cover. In fact, deforestation usually adds to both sides of the equation. The world's climate is a complex system governed by an interaction between the atmosphere, the ocean, land, ice caps, glaciers and sea ice. These elements form a carefully balanced equilibrium into which we have introduced a new and potentially destabilizing element. The excess energy trapped by man-made greenhouse gases will cause our climate to change. 
although we don't know exactly how. The social and political consequences of climate change will be especially acute for people whose lives depend most critically on the present climate patterns. Human hunger and poverty are already on the increase. If food supplies fail, migrants from degraded areas in search of arable land and fresh water could aggravate social and political conflict. Details are often disputed, but the fundamental problem is clear. Our current rates of greenhouse gas emissions amount to nothing less than a worldwide, uncontrolled and potentially catastrophic experiment with the Earth's climate. The dangers are proven. We know that it's disastrous. We can fight against it. Each of us can do something, regardless of who creates the most pollution. That's what I think. <laughs> 